Tonight's episode proves you can't keep a good cop dead. We watch Dead Heat, and I'm sorry to interrupt your erection, but it's time for B Movie Mania! Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bizarre, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B Movie Mania! And now, B-Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Paul Brooks, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. God damn it, Jay, you picked my uh, my greeting. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry to interrupt your erection, pal. Sorry to interrupt your erection, pal. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of B-Movie Mania. I am your host tonight, Jason Halls. And it's a real treat to be sitting next to my first co-host, Mike Hayes. Jay, you cheap old bitch. You took Chris's <laughs> introduction. <laughs> Let's see what he has then. Crazy Chris Hudson, you, you, you're looking very... Um, Piscopoian tonight. Hug the rug, you cheap old bitch. <laughs> uh, and last but not least, <laughs> the maniac who is the most likely to have an asphyxiation room in his house, Paul Brooks. <laughs> I'm dead, Jay. How much, how much worse could it be? <laughs> well, let's find out. Hey, you know what, Hudson? You have the right to remain disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of quotes already. Yes, we watched 1988's Dead Heat. This one stars Treat Williams and Joe Piscopo, directed by Mark Goldblatt and written by Shane Black's brother, Terry Black. You can really see yep. the family resemblance between this and Lethal Weapon. You think so? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah? Um, did Shane Black, I didn't know this. But I want, Paul sent me the uh, the commentary, but Shane's actually in the movie. Did you guys catch that? Yeah. That's well, I mean, cool. after I read it, yeah. Yeah, okay. I did, Jay, I didn't just send you the commentary. You tell everybody what I did for you. Paul actually ripped the file. Like he, he put his, no. he, he recorded the entire commentary track off of his television and then sent me the audio file. And then I, he gave me a countdown and then I was, I played the movie and we did like a one, two, three play thing. So I got to watch the commentary listening to the commentary on my phone, watching the movie from Amazon Prime. Wait, are, are you sure that Paul didn't just like read the transcript of the commentary into your phone <laughs> while you watched the movie? Well, he kind of did, actually. I, I got a little bit of commentary on commentary because Paul was nice. eating lunch, I think, and dinner, dinner and uh, commenting on the things he was seeing. Your secret safe with me. There you go. Shit. I think that that Tree Williams is looking pretty fucked up. Um, <laughs> um so yeah okay so goldblatt the director only did um one film or no three films i'm sorry he was mainly an editor did a lot of uh hey i i gotta say that he really had something to prove when he edited showgirls did he edit showgirls <laughs> i actually he, didn't he, notice that he, he edited showgirls the first two terminators yeah yeah True a lot Lies, of big wow. profile Troopers. stuff right a shitload of stuff it's pretty sweet. But I think he huh. had the most to prove with Showgirls. Yeah, just mainly an editor. Um, the movie itself, it's a very tight 86 minutes, I think. Um, does anybody mm -hmm. have the synopsis in front of him or anything? I do, actually. Hit it. Uh, this movie is so fucking great. <laughs> yeah, that sounds more like a quick take. That's how it starts? I, okay, <laughs> I have the synopsis. Where you want? Do you actually want it? I do, I do, Mike. <laughs> Let's see what uh, joke you have. A cop and his undead partner must chase down the diabolical villain who killed him. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. Sorry. Yeah. Was I supposed to make a joke? Was I just I thought you had. I thought you were surely going to play off what Chris did. <laughs> did I? Did I, Joe Pisca, blow it? <laughs> okay, that makes up for it. <laughs> um, I don't feel like the IMDb, IMDb synopsis does it justice. I, I, no. I think there's way more to this than just that. Quick takes. Paul, what do you got? You guys know how Chris's thing is that he clinks his glass with his clear artisanal ice in it. Yep. In the car. That's sort yeah. of his bit. Uh huh. I think I want to make my bit that I'm that I start snacking on stuff. 
This is your quick take? Also, Dead Heat is great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is going to be great editing work for me. Uh, I got some uh, Taco Bell cinnamon twist. Okay. Nice. Mike. You know, Jay, uh, cowboy adventures like these are on the endangered species list. And uh, probably for a good reason. Okay. Point taken. <laughs> and crazy Chris Hudson. Uh, you kind of gave a quick take, but if you want to do another one, that's cool. Oh, no. My real quick take is that this movie collects final rating points, just like detectives Mortis and Bigelow collect parking tickets. Nice. Oh, God damn wow. it. Wow. Nice. Uh, Jay, what about you? Uh, well, I made no secret about loving this movie Like when I picked it. Uh, it made me think about life and death. Death Day and reincarnation mm -hmm. and yeah. fish. Lots oh, happy of Death Day to you all, by the way. Uh, what? Happy Death Day to you all. Are we dying today? Day? No, no. It's just oh. the anniversary of your death. Yeah. Sorry, what? Jay. What? Happy belated Death Day. What? <laughs> yeah. Uh, happy future Death Day. It starts out pretty uniquely, I think. With credits, uh, yes. With credits, there there are credits. <laughs> Never seen that before. <laughs> People <laughs> getting credit for the work they did on a feature film. Mind-blowing. Darren but, McGavin is in this one. Yeah, Darren McGavin. You may know him as the dad from A Christmas Story. Oh, I adore that man. Which one's that one? Darren McGavin. Yeah. Wait, from what, though? He's the dad in A Christmas, Christmas Story. Story. Uh, oh, you're right. He is. Yeah. He's also Kolchak, the Night I Stalker. Well, I, I personally know him specifically from the General Motors Playwrights Theater. So, like, I <laughs> what? fucking got really excited when I saw that. I forgot you were uh, into that. He was in it. Way into the 1991 <laughs> to 1993 run series, the General Motors Playwrights Theater. Fucking one of my favorite drama uh, television shows ever. And <laughs> McNabb... <laughs> Sorry, McNabb's character's name in the movie, but Gavin is in it, and he's oh, fucking great. Sorry. But he's the dad in Christmas Story, huh? Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's very possible these movies are connected. Huh. We can get into that never. <laughs> <laughs> First scene of the movie after the credits. You cheap old bitch. Why, Chris, go ahead. Talk about it. Uh, it's time for some crime with unkillable <laughs> jewel thieves. <laughs> The Cash and Dash Gang. The Cash and Dash Gang. Yeah, some uh, zombies put some masks on so they won't be recognized, I guess. And they rob a jewelry, a jewelry store. Yeah, it starts off pretty fast and pretty sweet. furious, wouldn't you say? I mean, a lot oh, of yeah. action right in the beginning. <clears throat> Very rude, foul-mouthed hooligans. Ah, you cheap old bitch! You know, the weird thing about this scene, Jay, is uh, this movie came out in 88, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. A couple years later, a handful of years later, in I want to say like 94 or 95 maybe, there was a really famous uh, robbery, real life robbery that happened oh, here yeah. in L.A. Mm -hmm. that looked eerily similar to this scene. And to the point where I almost wonder if the bank robbers uh, watched Dead Heat and got some ideas from it. It's It's trippy. Uh, I should find a link to it or something and post it down below to how, like, crazy this shootout was, real-life shootout in L.A. Huh. Nearly 2,000 rounds of ammunition fired by the robbers and police, which is almost as many bullets as went into the robbers during this robbery in the film. They yeah. do get shot <laughs> Pretty a much. Lot. Um, and, I mean, did you guys pop hard when you first see Treat Williams and Joe Piscopo in that cool red convertible? Hell Yeah. And and is it just me or when they get the call to come to the robbery and treat, you know, was driving does that crazy spin around in the middle of the road. Did uh did Joe Piscopo lose the bun to his hot dog? Yes. That he was eating. <laughs> yes, yes, he, he did. did. What? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, that was great. I think they make a pretty good team, Joe yeah. and Treat. Like the actors, I think go well together. Yeah. Good chemistry. Yeah. I, as much as Joe Piscopo can go with anything. So. Yeah, I know. I know. You know, I read a, some criticism of him and, you know, people seem to not enjoy him. But I, I thought his performance was good. I thought he played the appropriate meatball. You can get totally ripped, man. Pig out, invite all your friends. Get yourself a beautiful lady, right? 
right in the heat of passion. Just as Sorry, did I interrupt last night's conquest? I really do not like Joe Piscopo very much at all, except in this movie. It's, I well, can see that. Well, maybe this, maybe this is time for my famous segment we all love. Joe Pisca, no. Oh. No. Oh. We're going to have a negative Don't bring bit. us down. <laughs> Listen, we may know Joe Piscopo from his time on Saturday Night Live with Eddie Murphy, but he also tried to run for governor of New Jersey back in 2016. He's also BFFs with Trump, so Joe Pisca, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know... Hey, you know what? You know what, guys? I'm sorry. I brought it down, didn't I? Maybe I should follow up with my fall. famous segment. How about a neat treat? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, boy. Now, listen, my friends. Oh, yes. Treat Williams has a wonderful and interesting history and backstory. Did you know that his great, great, great grandfather was a third cousin to P.T. Barnum? What? What? Wow, what a neat treat. That's a neat wow. treat. Thank you, Mike, for bringing it back up. So they get to the place. The zombie bank robbers come out. And yeah, we, we said it. They get shot a million times. They're shooting cops right and left. This yeah, is how many cops do you mess. think they killed? Oh, it's a total mess. And Joe's making cracks through the whole thing. Pretty much through the whole movie. There's no scenario except one in this film that gets Joe Piscopo down. Do you think he wrote his own, like, punch-up lines like that? Yes. They're just like, oh, Joe, say something did. funny. No, he did. Absolutely, he did improv. He did? He, he improv a lot, yeah. yeah. How do you fight this thing? Maybe we could drown it in A1 sauce. It it shows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, I mean, the studio, Jay, you probably heard this on the commentary track. They would not make this movie without Piscopo in yeah. it. That was really? like their serious? Yep. Wow. He yeah. had to be attached. He was that hot. At, yep. I mean, he's four. He's well, by the time they were making this, this is two, probably two years out after he left SNL on a high note. Obviously, he left on his own accord and was a treasure from SNL. So I guess I get it. Like I he was a hot ticket back then. I right? don't yeah. remember him. I mean, I remember him being like sort of big, but not like we're, we're going to hinge a movie on you. I, maybe yeah. because this uh, was yeah. well, a fairly low budget movie, so they're like, "All right, if we're gonna do this, we need somebody." And like, I don't know. I always grew up. I mean, I saw this movie when I was a teenager, and I remember Treat Williams being the like the guy in this movie. Hmm. Well, he is. He is the well, better I mean, is actor the guy, and yeah. the more well known yeah. actor. Yeah, but even at the time, he was like the star. He was like the the big name, yeah. a much bigger name than Piscopo. Well, he is. Uh, he stars yeah. in the vehicle. Piscopo is the sidekick. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Treat ends up doing a drive-by with a shotgun. Detective Mortis. Detective, yeah, Roger Mortis, Treat Williams, uh, does a drive-by with a shotgun. Joe shoots a grenade out of a guy's, the other guy's hand and blows him up. And uh, Treat ends up just ramming the hell out of one of those guys. Yeah. With whose car? With whose car, though? Well, that would be uh, Lieutenant Robert Picardo, I believe is his name in the film. <laughs> yeah. Bob Picardo. Okay. The captain. Choose them a new ass. Need I point out that you guys are already on probation twice? And that this morning's cowboy adventure puts both of you on the endangered species list? And that your badges go into the shitter if you screw up just one more time? Yeah, that's great. Those uh, cash grabbing dash motherfuckers. <laughs> It would be nice if you could earn it by nailing the rest of these cash and dash fuckers to the wall with a 12-inch railroad spike. Well, we're working on that, sir. Work harder! I replayed that line a couple of times in the movie. It's really good. The, the chief is great. I wish he was in it for more than one scene. Yeah. Well, you know, he's not because he had a <gasps> real hard time with his lines. Oh, yeah. oh, he couldn't get through really? more than like wow. two lines at a time. A apart from Treat and... Uh, the guy from the General Motors uh, Players Theater. Darren McGavin. Thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that guy. Um, apart from those two, he was the best actor. I, I mean, I thought the best delivered lines. The the acting isn't yeah, terrible no, he's, from he's the, your, across the board, but it's not great. They covered it up. I mean, they did multiple well, takes from, and, oh, sure. and I strung it you. together. But Good I, I feel like it came across very well. Yeah, well, absolutely. One, one, thing, one thing I love about this scene, though, is usually in these buddy cop movies when they're, you know, they're loose cannons, they're, they're doing their own thing. Is this is when they're asked to turn in their badge and their gun or some bullshit. The chief here is like, but you get results. <laughs> I mean, you got too many, too many yeah, parking yeah. tickets, but you're doing a great job. Right. 
Because so he's good he cop. likes them, but he has no choice but to give them one more chance, or they're done. It's that classic scenario. Yeah. And I think we go to the morgue. The morgue. Yes, Paul, talk about Rebecca the Mortician. She is there. She has done autopsies on these men, the bank robbers. Well, this is really interesting because she uh, says that she has actually done autopsies on these bank robbers before. Uh, And she takes photos, which is weird. Um, Hey, don't judge her, Paul. (laughs) Well, you know, maybe in 88 they had different uh, procedures. (laughs) <laughs> They're like, something's up here because why do these guys have, you know, they have like the whole uh, sort of why stitching and everything that you have when you, you have an autopsy done. So she sort of sounds the alarm that something is severely off. Piscopo doesn't really care, uh, but Treat is sort of like, hmm, okay, we got to figure this out. And I think it's fair to say, uh, Chris... You can back me up or not here. Uh, would would it be fair to say that there's a little bit of tension between uh, Treat and Mortician Rebecca? Yes. I'm backing you up on that, Jay. Sexual. Yeah, sexual tension. I, I got the impression that they they were their exes. They yeah, were like, a thing. Yeah. But something bad. Like he didn't call her the next yeah. day or something. Yeah. Like she's yeah. mad at him from the word go. But But they have a nice professional relationship and... I would even say still a bit of a friendship. I think that's fair. <laughs> and it is also here that uh, Darren McGavin, Mike's favorite thespian, uh, makes his <laughs> entrance into the movie, immediately rolling in just, no, 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 this is all fake. No, nah, just trying to cover up everything. So Treat and Rebecca catch up in her office where we see our first uh, fish. There's a real fish theme through the whole thing, if you guys yeah, notice that. dead fish. And she found a drug from Dante Pharmaceuticals underneath the skin of these guys. And Because that's routine that's, procedure. They immediately go to Dante. They immediately go to the pharmaceutical Well, company. something about they somehow fi- find out that Dante Pharmaceuticals had recently purchased a, a large quantity of this uh, drug or whatever it is. And so they, they sort of figure that they might have something to do with it. Yep. Things get weird quickly. Joe Piscopo is very horny in this scene. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it's erection time. It is erection time, yes. He they go in (laughs) and uh the receptionist doing what? Uh manning the phones, watching the front door, reading pornography. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know if he's reading it. He is quite capable of responding. To treat when he says, "Hey, you here? We are. Can I, you know, can we <laughs> see this?" The worst, he just ignores the worst him. receptionist. He ignores just him the to worst look at the porn ever. <laughs> yes. Well, the problem is there's a bunch of glass pane windows right behind him. I mean, everyone's watching. <laughs> Everyone can see what he's doing. <laughs> well, he's not even trying Mike. to hide it, Mike. He's got the cover out and everything. Everyone yeah. can see. Yeah. You don't have to be behind him to see what he's doing. <laughs> This place is very near and dear to my heart. This is the uh, water reclamation plant in Van Nuys, uh, which is also a beautiful Japanese garden that you can go to and walk around. And it served for years and years as uh, Star- Starfleet headquarters. So I love going to this place. Yeah, it looks great. You go there often? I go there whenever I can, Mike. Wow. And, and Chris. Be- beautiful place. Chris, I don't want to rob you of the opportunity to talk about that line that Joe Piscopo delivers. So <laughs> uh, would you like to continue the scene and uh, tell us how Joe takes over? Wait, the the line? You mean, sorry to interrupt your reaction. <laughs> Let me say that again. Oh, no. <laughs> you can't even blew say it. it. I blew it. I blew it. Oh, 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 but my editing button is broken. Episode. How many times have I said that line already? <laughs> oh, I blow it when it counts. Unfortunately, there's the no clip. editing in this section, so go ahead and try it again, Chris. <laughs> Just put the clip in. <laughs> yeah, I'll put the clip in. That's what she said. <laughs> but I didn't, so you have to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to interrupt your erection, pal. Sorry to interrupt your erection, pal, but we'd like to speak with the management of this facility. He got he it. He got it. Yeah, at least I got it out. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> here out. we meet Randy James, Miss Randy James, Lindsay Frost, Lindsay Frost, who I believe was a soap actress. She was soap a soap actress and uh, 
uh, sister of Mark Frost. Was she in? She was in Lost. And she was also in Lost. As what? I don't remember her. Uh, Boone and Shannon's mom. Really? Oh, okay. Okay. I did not remember that. Now would probably be a good time to point out that this movie, unlike this episode, has a very fast pace. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yes, it does. Very fast pace. Joe immediately asks her if she knows any zombies, which I found funny. Um, <laughs> again, Joe is horny. He's looking around at all the, the scientists, women. Um, she is trying to just play off everything, but there's you really can't play off the giant asphyxiation chamber that is right off of the main hallway. Well, <laughs> she's the she's the head of pay off. Uh, she's the head of PR. It's her right. job to, yeah. to kind of play. All That's true. Off. It is her job. But they do have an asphyxiation chamber where they kill dogs. <laughs> it doesn't help that it's right across the hallway from the lobby. Right. <laughs> it's right there. And it's so are the dogs. Easy access. Well, it gives anyone anyone waiting for whoever they need to see just sitting in the lobby waiting room. They, they get a good show. <laughs> uh, you know, Miss James, I got to take a leak so bad my teeth are floating. Is there a little boys room around here? I just got to Love it. So, yeah, Joe has to go pee. He uses that as a cover. They want to see what's in the secret area. There's a big door that says secret area. He doesn't really have to go pee. Wait, what? He just really wants to see what's behind the big no admittance sign on the big door. The no admittance room can be opened through a uh, a badge, right? You slide your badge in and it unlocks. He puts sure. a stupid visitor badge in there. It doesn't even, just the corner of it and the thing explodes. <laughs> he shorts out the lock, the security system, with a stupid visitor badge. Yeah, he puts like the tip of it in. <laughs> and it opens the door. Like that is shitty security. Come on. It is true. It was 1988. But well, it's not, well, okay, good security at for At least it quickly gets us to this huge sci-fi looking machine in the middle of the room, which is, they. I mean, pretty much quickly figure out it's the resurrection machine. Quickly figure it out because there's a fat wrestler on the table. <laughs> with like a... He, and, and okay, with, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. There's this fat wrestler like, that gets up and starts with fighting. With three noses. Yeah. Now, if you're going to resurrect somebody, that's all good. But what are you going to do to their face like that? Like, he has three faces m- meshed together. Got to work out the kinks. I, I guess. You know? Yeah. His cells got all gooey, maybe, and... He looks pretty sweet. He does. Yeah, he does look it's cool. It's a pretty Truth awesome like, The makeup the practi- is awesome. Yeah. The practical effects of this film are fantastic. Yeah, yeah. amazing. And there's a lot of them. The CGI, fact, eh, oh, very bad. No, no. Yeah, <laughs> very well, bad when they do that. But obviously, it is all practical. But I think what you're trying to say, Mike, is that all of it looks really good. Yeah, there yeah. is. Well, I, I feel like I did say that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, Joe starts fighting. What is this thing? Very ugly. Everything kicks off really fast because eventually a gun goes off. I think it's Joe's gun, and Treat starts to yeah. react, and then the receptionist stands up and starts sh- just stands up and starts shooting. What? What was that? <laughs> I don't, like that's his standing order. If anything goes wrong, open fire. Okay, but he he knows that. He knows that Treat is a police officer. He shoots at Treat. <laughs> Paul, yeah. P- Paul, think about this. You're sitting there looking at your porn. You hear a gun go off. What else are you going to do? <laughs> come. Shoot Treat. <laughs> shoot Treat. And come. <laughs> and no, through this I, whole not fight, Joe is still cracking jokes. Like, <laughs> I, oh, of course. Like, I know, there, stop. you know, I get it. You know, I know there's some qu- problems with Joe, but I didn't mind the fact that he's did this through the whole movie. No? <laughs> no. I didn't mind it. Uh, Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, no, well, about the security officer, though, guys, I'm pretty <laughs> sure the situation was that he, the security officer knows he's supposed to... He's a bad boy. Like, he's a bad boy? I... <laughs> the, the, okay, look, at this is a, this movie is great. Uh, it's one of those classic 80s-style things where they just... The, 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 the Don't think about it. Just accept it. You're saying he's in on it? Yeah, the only person not in on it is her, the PR woman, and whatever. Uh, that, while that doesn't make on, sense, yeah, he I, knows. He knows he's supposed to guard people with guns and shit like that. It's just what it is. Like the covers, uh, blown, don't think so about it. May as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. She, don't think about it. The bad boy daddy is gonna be mad at him if he doesn't fucking shoot at the cop. He knows this. That's what his thing is. And that's why he shot at him. He wasn't like, uh, you know, ready to. Never mind. I think you're right. 
but it just doesn't make it's any very sense. abrupt well, no. hey hey paul paul don't think about it chris you know obviously treat and joe live through this fight right well you know they've already shown off the asphyxiation room so show so... the asphyxiation room <laughs> show the asphyxiation room in the end of whatever act we're in <laughs> use it <laughs> Five minutes later? By the end of whatever act we're in, yes. Okay, okay. Well, how <laughs> does exactly that go down? Well, I don't know. Well, so Joe's fighting the big old monster guy <laughs> and Treat's trying to get in there too. And I don't even remember how he gets. He gets locked in there. And then we cut to the asphyxiation control room where Ooh. we see a shadowy gloved hand like pull a lever or something, which presumably turns the room on. And, you know, Joe's there fighting the monster by himself and treats his banging on the window, running out of breath. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And he dies. Yeah. I honestly don't remember how the monster dies, but uh, Treat dies pretty uh, well. He perishes quickly and quietly like a dog. <laughs> According to the reality of the film, Roger Mortis dies humanely. Yes, you're right, Chris. He does die humanely. And then cut to Jay. What next? <laughs> <laughs> the cops are all over the place. And I think it's kind of funny how the they're, they're there in Dante all over the evil machine super early in the movie. Mm -hmm. So normally that it's like this would be the scene or the set that you would get to in the end for like some big thing. But they do it right in the beginning. And yeah. our mortician Rebecca immediately figures out. Oh, hey, they use this to raise the dead. <laughs> so the cat's no, like out of the bag course. immediately. She, she even has to type his name in as if that makes a difference in bringing him back or not. Yeah. <laughs> you got to know how to spell his name correctly or he's not coming back. Oh, you get a typo in there. It's going to yeah. be part part elephant. <laughs> well, you know, that's probably how that monster got the third nose. Yep. Oh, she typed yeah. in two names accidentally. Yeah, She's like, that's what it is. Christopher Poppy. I got nothing. Wow, I'm bad at improv, wow. guys. <laughs> Are you? But you know what? I, you know what I was getting at. I, Three yeah. names. <laughs> <laughs> and this is probably our big moment here where Rebecca and Joe decide to bring Treat back to life. Despite probably all the other cops being there and the fact that this thing would be huge news, it's not. And they bring Treat back to life. Oh my God. I'm so happy you said this, Jay. We should probably talk about it later, but the fact that it's not big news is a weird situation in this film. <laughs> it no, is. Just don't think about it. It's an 80s because thing. The, yeah, everybody knows about, about it. it. The, it is that. The police, everybody knows that there is such a thing called the resurrection machine. It's, it, it, it's as if throughout the film, as we're alluding to, Treat Wilson does get reanimated. He, be, he plays a dead cop Treat for the Wilson. rest of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to call him out on it. Yeah. And he only has 10 to 12 hours to quote unquote live oh, yes. before his cells dissolve into an organic stew. Yes. Very important rule. And he, and he needs to wear lipstick. Yeah. Well, of course, because he's already. Okay. So a criticism of this <laughs> is that the makeup for Roger Mortis is all over the place. All over the place. He's pale. Oh, he's up. not pale. He's got raccoon eyes. He doesn't. Like, it's... <laughs> yeah, there, there was not a lot of consistency. Sometimes it looks great. It's uh, so great, though. Well, it's, it's fine it, in, in every individual scene, but just it goes very up and down. Like, when he goes to get the makeup at the drugstore, he doesn't really look that dead. Well, no, I mean, he's, he's still pale. early on. He's just yeah. a little pale. Well, right, it's just right. his lips at that point, and that's what he needs the lipstick for, to make his lips look more realistic. So he'll pass. <laughs> so he'll pass for alive when no one even fucking cares. Yeah, who cares? Like you got ten hours to live. You, like get your get your shit done, man. <laughs> well, I would like Paul to say something about uh, when Treat and Joe go to Randy James's house. Yeah, they think that she might be involved. I think actually they call her the prime suspect. And um, Piscopo. You know, again, a little bit of a loose cannon here. Not not exactly a by the book kind of cop. He plays by his just, own rules. <laughs> he plays by his own rules. He just kind of starts going through her stuff. <laughs> I don't think they have a, have a warrant for any of this, but he goes through her panties. He holds them up. Uh, well, well she even calls him out on that you. later. Like what in a later scene? Like you imagine what you could get with a warrant. Like he mm -hmm. just doesn't oh, care. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He doesn't care. Right. So Paul, you mentioned a VCR but, tape. 
Yeah, they find a videotape and uh, Lindsay, what's her name, Rebecca? No, this is uh, Randy. This is Randy Randy, James. Randy and Rebecca, Randy. Uh, Randy clearly does not want them to watch the tape, so of course they do. And this is where we first see Vincent Price yeah. as Arthur P. Loudermilk. What? Seemingly <laughs> on his name. deathbed. Oh, sorry, what? No, no. <laughs> Arthur what? P. Loudermilk. We have something on the monitor, Captain. Princess, this may be the last time that I ever talk to you. And I want you to know certain things that I was unable to say until now. <laughs> Everyone has name. to say it. What? Louder milk. Arthur, Arthur P. P. Arthur P. Louder milk. milk. Louder milk. <laughs> That's a name someone made up as a placeholder and said, I'll go, I'll do a real name later and then forgot. That's fantastic. So Arthur P. Louder milk. <laughs> this is the first time we see him. <laughs> The thing is, is that he gets cut off when more zombies attack. Right. That's the oh, important yeah. he, bit. He calls her princess and he says, you know, there's some things I need to tell you or whatever. And then they're rudely interrupted by zombie uh, henchmen. Right. And I don't think we've mentioned yet that everybody in this movie has an Uzi. <laughs> what? Well, it's the 80s. Yeah. They really <laughs> go to the max, though, with these Uzis. The zombies have Uzis. Yeah. Everybody has. It may as well be Die Hard. It's yeah, yeah. It's fucking. Everyone's got a goddamn Uzi, a gun that is impractical and no one used. <laughs> and I, one of the zombies. I don't know if you, we have any. It's always Sunny fans out there, but one of the zombies reminded me of what I think the character Cricket will look like by oh, like yeah. season twenty. <laughs> wow, the long-haired like. one, right? Yeah. See, yeah. I, I thought it was a more of a David Spade sort of looking guy. Well, yeah, no. Yeah, you're well, right, David too. David Spade already looks like <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so there's well, a... Well, so does Cricket in Always Sunny. Yeah, I mean, fair enough. Yeah. Fucked up in that show. You're right. That's he why does. he gets more and more True. messed up throughout the show. So I think by season 20, he's just going to look like a messed up zombie with an Uzi. <laughs> but... Yeah, but they shoot up the joint. Well, you know, they're shooting at... Uh, our heroes here and so this big fight ensues and they sort of and it ends up where they have to take it outside of the hot tub <laughs> yeah i have in my notes that nut shots still work on zombies and joe <laughs> seems to punch one of them in the nuts until they break no but you're absolutely right there's no continuity throughout the film as to what kills a zombie it, it, it's kind of all over the place yeah well, so far we've got explosions and maybe electricity. Yes, for sure the yeah, electrocution well, and, gets and, and lots of nut shots. Okay, but there, there's the other zombie in this scene. Uh, I think it's Piscopo rams like a metal pole through his stomach and just tosses him into the pool, and, mm -hmm. and, and that does mm -hmm. it. Well, Paul, I think what it is, as shown by the later late afternoon of The Living Dead, where the character of Chris. <laughs> Throws a, backpack throws a backpack and hits a zombie in the in the crotch. It's a that, and that YouTube. does it. That nut shots totally kill zombies. Nut shots <laughs> yeah. work totally free if, on If YouTube. you're a zombie enthusiast and give a shit about any of the realities that zombies involve in, don't watch either of those movies. You'll be upset. <laughs> but if you did want to watch Late Afternoon of the Living Dead, it's available totally Actually, please, for free yeah, on YouTube. Please, please watch Late Afternoon. It's a very good film. We made it. <laughs> Yeah, you know, they do some different things with the zombies in this movie, and I appreciate it. Yeah, they do different. That's absolutely true. Like giving zombies guns. I mean, before well, that, I think Day of the Dead is the only movie to give a zombie a gun. Giving them guns and goals, like shooting up a jewelry store. Yeah. Never seen that yeah. before. Yeah. Uh, they determined that the zombies were there to kill Randy James. They killed her fish. Her favorites. The filmmakers were clear to show that the aquarium was shot so treat williams is hanging out at home right and he's trying to figure out himself right like he's in there he's what is he brushing his teeth no he's combing his hair right oh he's yeah. losing hair and then i dude i fucking loved this i'm watching it he's looking in the bathroom mirror i'm like oh man if only they're gonna do a good jump scare <laughs> if only there's gonna be a good jump scare with this mirror but they're not going to it's an 80s comedy they're not gonna be a jump scare and there's a jump it's scare. It's a jump scare. Oh, there's a jump scare. <laughs> yes, there is a jump scare. He sees himself as a horrid looking dead thing. 
Yeah. Uh, probably one of the most important details to come out of this whole sequence is that Dante Pharmaceuticals was Arthur P. Loudermilk's personal think tank. So they do pretty much whatever mm -hmm. he wants. And they gave some of this drug they were tracking down to a guy named Thule in Chinatown. So that takes them to a butcher shop. Special effects wise, it's absolutely the best scene. Oh, it's fantastic. It's a good well, scene. It's ridiculous. What I want to know is you've got this awesome resurrection machine at Dante Pharmaceuticals. Who the fuck installs a second one in the ceiling of a butcher shop? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great yeah. question. Mr. Thule <laughs> played the old man who sold the Mogwai in Gremlins. No, he did. Yes, he did. Yeah, he absolutely actor, did. Dude. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Are you fucking serious? No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they head into the butcher shop <laughs> where the butcher, Professor Toru Tanaka, is chopping up some chicken. And I don't know if you wrestling fans out there recognized Professor Toru Tanaka, but no. he was a three-time WWE tag champion with Mr. Fuji. Yeah. So the WWF yeah, back when it was WWF, yes, yeah. Um, he is no oh, before, longer before us. before Vince McMahon sold it to ESPN, right? <laughs> Which has probably happened by the time this comes out. Probably. <laughs> hey, can I take this, Jay? Yeah, go ahead. So they want to question Thule, right? They think that he has something to do with this, and he sort of gives this like spiritual explanation. Oh, you know, everything is life and death, or whatever the hell he says. And then he goes, let me demonstrate for you. And he like quickly like flicks a switch that turns on this like. Ceiling mounted resurrection machine. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And I'm like, what is this? But this is balls to the wall resurrection because all dead things in the shop start moving. This is certainly the most so famous scene great. of the movie. Or headless ducks, chicken oh, yeah. wings, chicken wings. Flapping. Chris, chicken now wings. don't tell me you wouldn't eat some undead chicken oh, wings. I would eat. I would let those things writhe all the way down my throat. <laughs> oh, gross! <laughs> yes, a, a giant pig jumps on Joe. A liver wraps itself around Treat's face. Um, there's undead ducks. It's, it's total chaos and strobe lights, and the butcher. Uh, Professor Toru Tanaka chops off part of Treat's hand. <laughs> he like cuts into his hand, like in between his his middle two fingers. And Joe shoots him and is like surprised that it works. You're kidding! Just one shot? They're not all zombies, Doug. <laughs> that he actually dies with a bullet because <laughs> they can't all be zombies, pal. <laughs> right. Um, and then, of course, we get the heavy of the scene, the undead cow. Yeah, just just in case you didn't think Professor Tanaka was was the heavy enough for this scene. Which I also kind of find bowl. funny because the cow, I mean, what was it going to do? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, well, what are what are duck heads? Well, OK, to do? true. But like, it's literally just a slab of meat with legs. Yeah. It could maybe think, suffocate him, I guess. But uh, I, I think Thule was just trying to slow them down. Probably. Exactly. So I mean, escape. it's a big slab yeah. of beef uh, and it's a zombie. So it's probably <laughs> trying to eat <laughs> Treat and Joe Piscopo. It just doesn't have a head and it can't do it. <laughs> so it tries to absorb it right into the stomach cavity. Yeah. Well, it doesn't but even man. have a stomach with bile or anything, no. so it can't even absorb it. It doesn't know what it's doing. <laughs> it's in complete existential horror at, at what it is, <laughs> while and the only thing it can think of to do is kill <laughs> everything in sight. But it does the awesome kind of like bowl, kind of like stamp kind of thing before it charges. Yeah. It's so that great. Was great. <laughs> Which I <laughs> believe it, Paul, it was a guy in a suit, right? Then they say on the those are too? actors in yeah. there. Yeah. Oh my god, really? <laughs> it was an actor. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Those, there's people in there no on idea. like stilts or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> so it good. Was a lot of fun. Oh, so it. they finally kill it by shooting it because uh, I guess that works. <laughs> and Randy James notices that Treat has been cut up by the butcher and says, "Oh, you're hurt, <laughs> lady." 
I'm fucking dead. <laughs> Thank you. Lady, I'm fucking dead. <laughs> and she has a response that's still great, too. Doesn't give you the right to be rude. <laughs> if, this, this is where the difference between Treat and Piscopo really shines. Because Treat says that line, and it's fucking great. He delivers mm-hmm. it really well. And it's fantastic. And you cheer for him. You get a little swell in your chest. Anytime Joe says something, you're like, God damn it, Joe, shut the fuck up. Yeah, every time Joe says something, I lose my erection, pal. <laughs> I don't know. I completely disagree. I, I disagree. <laughs> I like Joe. Well, well no, no, no. You can, Paul, hold on. You can't completely disagree. You might like Joe's interjections and shit. You can't tell me Treat's not a better actor and the way he delivers lines isn't better. You can't say that. Well, Treat has more if to I do. I had to pick, like... If you said you can, you have to cut one of these actors from the movie. I would cut Joe Piscopo. Yes, yes, that's what I'm. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Because Joe is, but I'm Joe is he fairly him, one note. He delivers that line so fucking well when he's like, "I'm," you know, what, what does he say? "I'm dead." You know, lady, I'm fucking dead. Lady, I'm fucking dead. Yeah, lady, I'm fucking <laughs> just, dead. Just edit and it he back does in it. Here. He like turns <laughs> his head and says it, and the way he fucking delivers it is so good. Like it's, <laughs> it's, it's like he was doing a good job. <laughs> It's, it's one so of the great. things. One of the things that I really appreciate about this movie, and this was again on the commentary, they the the director and the writer and everybody praised Treat and praised uh, pretty much all the actors involved mm-hmm. for how seriously they took this. Yeah, I totally, mean, it totally. could have very easily been a case where they're like, "Oh God, what what is this?" You know, but like, no, like. Darren McGavin made everybody run lines in between takes. Mm-hmm. Like they were, wow. they were on their shit with this. Yeah. That's awesome. You can tell. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like, yeah you can definitely yeah. tell. Treat was calling the director like late at night at his house, just saying, "Hey, what if I do this? What if I do that?" So, <laughs> that, nice. yeah, you're I right. They were all That's taking good. it very seriously. Yeah, Treat does the straight man role so well in this. Mm-hmm. Like he, mm-hmm. he, he, the insanity and the wild fucking bonkers shit that happened in this film <laughs> treat is always grounded and he's always serious and when he makes a snide little cute remark he does it so well yeah it pops so when he great. does it you're right it does pop more because joe is yeah. joe is one note and treat has more to do in the movie well no yeah it's exactly. fine i mean no it, it is the, the, the studio got what they wanted out of both of right. them they yeah. wanted joe to be the sort of like over the top comical guy and have treat be more of the straight man yeah. oh exactly no and i agree i just mean i just really thought when that line happened when that line happened in this film oh yeah i i just went oh fuck man like he just said it to my heart <laughs> he said it to my soul when he said that lady i'm fucking dead and I'm not joking. I, I mean it. Yeah. Hey, Treat, if there's any chance you're listening to this, and yeah, I'm a little drunk right now, but we love you. Everybody loves Treat. Dude, he's so hot in yeah. this too, right? He's a good looking man. <laughs> oh my goodness. We're going to zip through a couple scenes because the next scene, they just get some information and play with a duck head. Um, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, zip through. Yeah, it. Randy James is sewing up Treat's hand and there's a little bit of tension there. Like, eh, you know, but Treat doesn't have long to live. They hit some library. They learned a bunch of the the thing that comes out of the library research is they discover a lot of big money people have died recently. Um, Can I say one thing about sure. the library yeah, scene? Yeah. Uh, Not enough like, books. For, <laughs> for yeah, for as goofy <laughs> as this movie is, like. <laughs> In the library, it all kind of hits treat or um, Mortis, Roger, Roger Mortis, Roger Mortis. Roger Mortis. <laughs> uh, it hits him at once that he's not going to have a chance to like read all these books. He starts writing his own obituary right there in the library. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, damn, dude, there's like a mortality, you know, aspect to this that like kind of hit me like unexpectedly hard, like. How horrifying mm-hmm. well, would it be to be in his position and to know that you got five hours left? You know what I mean? It's kind of well, horrifying. Sure. Well, Paul, that's, uh, that's how I feel you feel constantly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. no, I'm, not, I'm not joking. I don't mean that as a joke. I know. I, I just know came Paul, across like one. I don't know if the listener is familiar with Paul's plan for his future, but Paul, you do plan on cryo... What's the right way to say it? Because one's fake and one's real. Freezing my head. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. As an atheist, you you are constantly in fear of your own mortality. Every every time I go to bed, this is why I hate sleeping. I'm like, fuck. There's no guarantee. 
this could be it. I mean, you could say that at any given moment of the day, though. You could have an aneurysm and drop dead at any minute. Right. Happy to help. (laughs) Sucks. I hate to cut short all of your existential crises right now, but I only have one or two more hours to not live, so I need to get through this episode. Hey, you know, that all this talk of time and needing to get through things and not having enough time reminds me, um, we actually do need to go to a commercial real quick. So if you guys could just Uh, sit there, Paul, hopefully you'll be with us by the time (laughs) we get on the other side of this. We have this contract with Night Beast Industries, and we have to fulfill that no matter who lives or dies in this podcast. So we, (laughs) unfortunately, we have to cut to a commercial now, but we'll be right back. Mm -hmm. It's back. Because you wanted it. I slap it on everything. It's back because you love it. It saved my marriage. It's back because you can't resist. My kids won't shut up about it. For a limited time only, the $5 spew is back. Finally, a reason to go to the bathroom. This offer is only good at participating Night Beast Industries outlet stores. But guess what? That's all of them. I really wish I had more. There's no limit on your purchase. If you buy one $5 spew for $5, you can get a second or a third for an additional $5. Tuesday nights? All night. What a deal. Act now to receive a commemorative chalice for your $5 spew for free. I like that. If you'd prefer a homestyle bun, that's fine too. I thought I was going to get four inches, but he gave me more like 12. Tell us how you do the spew on Twitter using the hashtag $5 spew. Spell out the number five or use the numeral. We don't care. Just come and get your $5 spew now. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, we're back. This is a great commercial. Love that one. Treat and Randy decide to go to Arthur P. Loudermilk's grave. God damn it. <laughs> Joe. M- mausoleum. Yeah, it's a mausoleum. Joe says he's going to meet them back at Randy's, but I don't think they ever give a reason why Joe just didn't go with them. No. Right? No. I thought he was off to do some other bullshit okay. to find we something else. We were all else. confused, right? Yeah. Totally. Okay. One, I didn't pick up that the woman's name was Randy, so I thought they were going back to their buddy's house. <laughs> so I was going to go to Randy's house, throw back some beers. Wait, which buddy? When, when the following scene happens, I didn't know Doug was involved. <laughs> right. No. Okay. They go to, so yes, Treat goes into the mausoleum with Randy and she admits she was in drug rehab and she's not Arthur P. Loudermilk's daughter. <laughs> and they find a code in a lampshade. A lampshade. Yeah, what is this lampshade thing? This is the most baffling, like apparently Loudermilk. <laughs> I don't even know how to describe I, it. I don't know what to say. Yeah, he put a number in a lampshade that eventually leads them to who is doing all Not this. Not just a number. It looks like a VIN number. Yeah. Well, yeah, but but if you look at a telephone n- number pad and translate those numbers into letters, it <laughs> translates to the license plates of the guy responsible for the resurrection machine. This in other words, ridiculous. it's an 80s thing and you don't think about it. It's, no. It's as if someone said, well, where, where are we going to put this like clue they got to find? I don't fucking know. They didn't have it in the script. Uh, I don't know. How about this? One of the production assistants write it somewhere and we'll make the <laughs> actors find it. Okay, but it's written inside the lampshade in what looks like blood. Yeah. Well, yeah, but it oh, also duh. it also translates to a fucking license plate. After he looks at a phone, it's <laughs> After insane. He looks at a phone. <laughs> <laughs> so, I know not even movie makes goddamn absurd. sense. <laughs> Louder milk on his deathbed was like, I better leave a right. clue inside of this license plate in case a cop who is dead wanders into my mausoleum and needs to figure out the mystery. They, they really could have what gone from A to B about? a lot more clearly. It just felt so random. But they oh they get God. this number. They don't know what to do with it. So they go back to Randy's. Mike, is this next scene your favorite scene of the film? Well, okay, so this is the scene 
that really confused me because as I said a little bit earlier, unless it was edited out, (laughs) I was unaware that the the main actress's name was Randy in this. Okay. (laughs) So they go back to her home. Right. And we find a hockey player effectively <laughs> head standing inside of a, a, a yeah. fish tank. It, One of the fish tanks that wasn't blown up and yeah. shot through in the yeah. earlier scene. And I do know that earlier I did say the practical effects are very good, but this is the exception. You're, you're because correct. Because yes. it looks very bad. It does. It's <laughs> it's it, Doug, it, right? It's supposed to be Doug. It doesn't I look didn't know that. I literally like didn't know that. I think there's a line. I think there's a line off screen, isn't there? I think it's a line off screen that says it's Doug, and I think no, they did. Well, okay, okay. Now I have to admit this. I didn't realize Pisco's name. Pisco's name was Doug. Okay, (laughs) that's fine. (laughs) They do say Doug's dead a bunch, and I was like, was that Pisco's name? That there's like a mullet on this guy. Is that who that is? I don't know. It just looks like a hockey player hanging out. So I just (laughs) anyway. There's a mannequin down with its head in a fish stuck tank. in a fish tank. Uh, in a place a fish tank does not belong. Right. It's just on the floor of the place. And I believe they say, I believe they, the commentary said they acknowledged that it didn't look like Doug, so they had to do the line to so that the audience would well, know that it's Doug. They said Doug a bunch, actually. Yeah, I so I think I that was the way they like, had to fix it. The only thing Because it could, comes yeah. out of nowhere. Yeah, it, it does. It comes it out does. of nowhere. You don't know why Doug is in Randy's house, why he didn't go with them. Who killed Doug? Well, but also, <laughs> me, imagine me, A, not knowing his name is Doug, and B, not knowing her name is Randy. I'm very confused. <laughs> Um, so yeah, they covered Doug up. He's dead. Randy decides to take a shower. (laughs) There's not much of a reaction. They're like, uh, no, yeah. Why this? Hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. Yeah. You come home. Jay, you, (laughs) all right, Chris, you're the killer in this scene, but Jay, you and Paul come home to Randy's house and you find me (laughs) fucking, (laughs) fucking, (laughs) Fucking double Upside daring, down. double daring into a fucking fish tank. <laughs> <laughs> what is your reaction? I watch Paul take a shower. Uh, yeah, <laughs> nice. actually, you know what? It all nice checks day. out. It's all fun. well. Hey, well, it's all good because we finally get that nude scene we've all wanted. Yeah. Okay. So mm-hmm. now, Randy is sitting in the shower, and she admits that she was in rehab when she met Arthur P. Loudermilk. <laughs> it never God gets damn. old, <laughs> and. She had died, and they brought her back. And she was supposed to have a huge normal twist. lifespan, but they lied to her. Huge twist. Yeah, huge twist. And man, does that decomposition catch up to her. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> she fucking Raiders of the Lost Arks on cue. Yeah. Okay, but did I miss something here? Because obviously, uh, Treat it has, you know, 12 hours or whatever. She has been... <laughs> sort of going along with the program or whatever and and she's like oh by the way i died and they they said that um if as long as i went along with their plan they would keep me alive mm-hmm. well apparently she stopped going along with the plan <laughs> and a switch went off yeah that's the only thing i can assume because she decomposes in seconds yeah it's awesome <laughs> and listeners if you uh watched our saturday morning episode of is there nudity for this episode I'm sorry if I was vague on whether or not there was, because I mean, what what do you want me to do here? Like, yeah and no at the same time. Yeah. Wait, what? Well, there's it's nudity, not, there? but it's 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 for oh, a split second, boob. and it's a makeup effect. It's not her. Yeah. It's not her. Yeah. It's 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 a mannequin. It's a whole total makeup effect. And her head. It's like so... a decomposed body as yeah. the head falls off, and it's yeah. Her head it's apologizes as it's dissolving into goo. <laughs> I'm sorry, Roger. Please forgive me. <laughs> Which is exactly it why does. my my answer on on is there nudity was. <laughs> I, uh, <yeah. laughs> This is where Mortis discovers the the license plate code. Yeah, he just happens to glance at a phone. 
Mortis is completely alone. He finally confronts the dad from A Christmas Story and accuses him <laughs> of everything. The jewel thievery, killing Doug, killing everybody. And he killed Rebecca. Kill, and, and boom, he, yes. What the fuck? Dude, if anybody got screwed over in this movie, it is Rebecca. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Mike, just so you know, that is the mortician that we see throughout the film. Ugh, that was brutal because the 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 way that Roger finds out that she's dead, he's inside the back of a ambulance, and Darren McGavin goes, "Oh, by the way," and pulls the sheet over, and there she is. I believe there were were there other drafts, or was it the sequel that was proposed where she comes back? There was talk of her coming back. Okay. Well, she doesn't, but. No, <laughs> there was talk of uh, somewhere in there of like a potential sequel or or a different draft yeah. where she was going to come back. Yeah, if you if you listen to the commentary, there's talk of a sequel. Like the studio, apparently the movie did well enough where the studio said, "Hey, we would like a sequel to this," and the writers literally went, "Well, everyone's dead. What do you want us to do?" <laughs> like there is not a single character. The only one I can think of is the police chief. He would be the only <laughs> character. Dad from Christmas Story slams him into the ambulance handcuffed with his dead girlfriend and sets and Treat actually is the one who forces it to go because he's just going to let him sit there and decompose and all the bad guys right. leave. And instead, Treat puts it in gear and starts rolling down a hill. And it picks up quite a lot of speed. Well. Rather, just on the sake to be accurate, he puts it in neutral. Treat's philosophy from this point on changes. And you know what? He's right, because there is a good splody. There is. And <laughs> Treat only has 45 minutes it, left, so he doesn't care about anything it, anymore. It's it's such an awesome explosion, it even like gets him out of his handcuffs. <laughs> it <laughs> does. Out of his handcuffs, they show it a couple times, like a, every good 80s movie should do, the same explosion multiple times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Like 13 times. <laughs> yeah, it's va- fantastic. The paramedics are cleaning it up, and Treat unzips his own body part. bag. He unzips his own body bag. <laughs> <laughs> Smoke is it's coming so out funny. of it. <laughs> and now he's full zombie. <laughs> he looks like shit. His flesh has fallen off of his head. His hair's all gelled up. The Shane Black cameo. Yeah. Yes, and the the Shane Black cameo is here. He just plays oh, a cop. Oh, is it? Yeah, he's the cop yeah. that Treat takes the gun Gives from. Gives him his gun? Mm-hmm. McNabb and everybody are with Arthur P. Loudermilk. He sashays out. You gotta say this whole whole thing every time. Of course. Arthur P. Loudermilk is trying to sell the group of rich people on this whole process. Give me half your fortune and you can have eternal life. You know what I love about Arthur P. Loudermilk's philosophy is that he believes poor people are supposed to die. It's a real elite versus common man theme in this whole movie. Mm Mm-hmm. And fish. <laughs> we are now at the point where Treat storms the entire place, and it's ma- amazing. It's just total guns blazing. And it's I so good. absolutely love how nonchalant he is. He's strolling through this place, wasting everything with this Uzi. He has no fucks left to give. And I, I love the part where he runs into the other zombie with the Uzi. And yes, <laughs> that's so hey, great. Hey, hey Jay, hey yeah. Jay, yeah. hey Jay, can I say something, please? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, Mike, you describe this then. <laughs> I like your enthusiasm. Uh, he runs into some guy who's supposed to be like garden or whatever, and he's a zombie, obviously. So they just shoot each other for about two minutes uh, <laughs> with Uzis, and it's amazing. It is uncut well it's cut back and forth but like it's a two cam it's a two camera shot where it's just back and forth between the two <laughs> it's, just one- it's one of them holding a gun and wiggling around for about three seconds and then it cuts back to the other one holding the gun wiggling around for about three seconds <laughs> but that's the amazing thing mike is that the studio made them cut that down apparently originally no, it fuck was like you. Two, yeah it was like two minutes of oh, them shooting each other it fantastic. just kept going and okay going. Oh, so that's you know what paul <laughs> that's wonderful <laughs> there's a weird rating thing that's happening in my brain and knowing that the, the creators wanted that to be that long ups yeah. it but the fact yeah. that the studio downed it, downs it. 
So I gotta I gotta calculate this yeah, right now. But they there was I want that two minute scene. They struggled for an R rating for this movie. Everything was supposed to be more gory. Um right. and I think what did they say? They had to submit it at least three times, I think. Oh wow. There's a lot of studio involvement. Yeah, yeah they wanted very specific things and they had to work with them. Yeah. That's crazy for a movie like this. Like why is yeah. the studio like meddling in, in a masterpiece like this it's a fucking cop zombie movie i know like, well even look at the marketing <laughs> they they weren't even happy with the marketing that it like if you no. look at the box there's no. nothing that really says hey this is a zombie cop movie you know so finally the guard dies jay the guard is pushed into the asphyxiation chamber and treat nonchalantly lobs a grenade in after him well hey the dying in the asphyxiation <laughs> chamber is a quiet and humane death <laughs> Except when you're in there with a grenade. Well, even I would say even if you're <laughs> yeah, in there with all right. a grenade. Um, so yeah, Treat walks into the main chamber where Arthur P. Loudermilk is still giving his spiel. <laughs> he opens up with his Uzi. <laughs> Thule is there and opens up with an Uzi. Everybody opens up with Uzis. Dead They're, people are, are, are everywhere. The rich people are dying. Old people getting caught in the crossfire. McNabb is in there, the dad from the Christmas story. He reveals the zombie. Wait, what? <laughs> The zombie Sweet. Doug that they have, whose face has been reconstructed completely uh -huh. after being drowned. And, but whatever. <laughs> Joe Piscopo didn't want to wear a bunch of makeup, so there you go. And he hops off the table and is commanded to attack Treat. And Arthur P. Loudermilk explains God damn it. that his, he, his brain has been dead for too long, so he's, like, susceptible to commands. He, he's... Yeah. he's under sort of he's under Arthur P. Loudermilk's uh, control, or is it Darren McGavin's control? Mortis reminds Piscopo of the comments Piscopo made when he got the lipstick. Really? Yeah, he says the lipstick brings out my eyes. I did not understand that line. Oh, he's trying to jog his memory. Right. Treat manages to snap Doug out of his zombie state. Mm -hmm. And they both turn on Christmas Story Dad, which is just, I'd prefer to call him that rather than Darren. It's fine. Yeah. I, I call him General Motors Dad, but that's fine. The second best line is when Arthur P. Loudermilk is urging <laughs> <laughs> Christmas Story Dad to just kill them. Why can't you kill him? He just responds with, shut up, you old fart. <laughs> shut up, you old fart. <laughs> he immediately turns the gun on himself as soon as they get close to him. I love that. Oh, oh God. Dude. I'm going to suffer. It's hey. dramatic. Instantly, oh just God. boom. I've never seen anyone, and I guarantee, I almost guarantee no one's ever done this in reality, killed themselves with an Uzi. <laughs> well, let me just tell you guys how traumatizing this was for me as someone who from the age of six years old, has watched A Christmas Story every <laughs> Christmas and Christmas Eve three to four, sometimes five times every holiday season to see one of the most beloved father characters off himself and have his brains splatter behind him. It was not pleasant. Do you think that Uzi was made by Red Rider? <laughs> oh, no <laughs> oh, don't ruin God. this he for shot me. his eye out this is even more traumatic so mortis and piscopo are pissed that he killed himself and they're like uh-uh you <laughs> robbed me yeah oh that's such a good line <laughs> that's though. great he's so upset god damn you mcnab you cheated me you robbed me mcnab they double resurrect him which apparently is not good <laughs> Because he fucking exploded. You want to see what happens when you resurrect somebody twice? Not really. And so, and so at oh, 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 oh. after they've killed, resurrected him twice, they both, Joe and Treat, walk off through a hallway that then goes into like a light, which I assume yeah. is a stylistic version of like the afterlife, right? Yeah. Stairway to heaven. But here's my, my main question from the movie is, through all of this, Arthur P. Loudermilk is explaining to the rich people <laughs> that they've improved the process, that you can live forever. They, yeah. they fixed things. And they brought Joe Piscopo back 
after presumably fixing the issues that would cause them yep. to dissolve after 12 hours. So Mortis is going to die in like 20 minutes. But is yeah. Joe Piscopo going to unlive forever? Well, Let's but here's so. the thing, Chris. I mean, P- Piscopo's got probably 10 to 12 hours. He just got reanimated. But <laughs> Arthur P. Loudermilk is like, you guys... I got the issues worked out. Like, let's let's make a deal here. They don't even think about it. They don't even think like, oh, maybe we should, you know, like let him put us through the process here so we can. I I would pause there for a second and be like, let's talk louder. You would not just blast the machine with your guns. (laughs) No, I would not. What's great is, is they just leave Arthur P. Loudermilk to just watch the explosion. They don't even, like, care about this guy at all. No. They just leave him alone. I presume he died in the explosion. Yeah, I guess, yeah. Hey, guys. With this wonderful discussion we just had, it just now dawned on me that Joe Piscopo's name starts with piss. God damn it. (laughs) Rating time! (laughs) Oh, shit. Okay, we are going to rate this in 1 to 100... Undead chicken wings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Paul. There, there's there's nothing to not like about this movie. 90 undead chicken wings. Mike. <laughs> uh, this movie, there's stuff to un- dislike about the movie, but not much. Like, it's very fun. You have to... It's an 80s fucking fantasy fucking wild movie. Uh, I rate it uh, the 80s undead chicken wings. The, the 80s? 80s? <laughs> the 80s. Chris. I love this movie. I have a long history with this movie. It's one of the movies that got me really into B-movie stuff like this. And we didn't even talk about the awesome theme song that plays over the credits. Oh, it's going to play during the end. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're going to hear it. <laughs> Paul You're has a lot of authority it. on that, as we heard in the <laughs> well, last Jay, episode. Am I wrong? Am I wrong, I, yeah, Jay? It's fine. I am, I am now <laughs> eating 90 undead chicken wings. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, uh, there's not a lot to dislike about this movie. It's crazy. A lot of it, uh, some of it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it's it's a lot of fun. So I'm going to go 92 Undead Chicken Wings. Nice. 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 Very nice. On the next episode of B-Movie Mania. Yeah, so I'm next. And I have to thank my girlfriend for suggesting this one. I had it narrowed down to a few, and she saw this one. I was going to say, what? My fiance. Could be my wife by the time this airs. (laughs) Potato, Uh, potato. She she saw this movie in my watch list and uh, thought that this would be a good one. And I I tried to resist. I tried oh so hard to resist. (laughs) But then I talked to Jay a little bit today. And he talked about how we haven't really had any stinkers on the show yet this season. What? So we're going to do one this time. Wow. So I picked a movie that has more zombies, more Mojo Nixon, and more of one dude's ass as we watch Butt Crack. (laughs) Yes! Oh, Butt Crack the movie. Butt crack. Butt crack Mojo Nixon's in Butt Crack. Mojo Nixon is in Butt Crack. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! Oh, this was in my queue oh, anyway. I'm so, all right, that sounds good. Oh, oh no! Yes. I mean, yes, yes, but also, oh no! <laughs> Wait a minute! It's not hitting me. When you said we haven't had any stinkers, you meant because of yeah, butt crack. yeah. <laughs> it was there you pun. go. There you go. Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydie? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out, touch them. They are touching themselves, and they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo! Uh, check us out on the podcast stuff, like Apple Podcasts or iTunes, whatever it's fucking called these days. Um, give, you know, give us a rating if you would please. 
Uh, you don't even have to type anything. Just click the stars. It'd be great. We'd really appreciate it. We also have a store at store.bbmania.com. You can check that out. We have so many good shirts. We've been doing dumbass bits. So we've, there's a whole bunch of new shirts on there. Rankin' Rankin'. keep fucking each other over. And it's Crankin fantastic. Rankin' Rankin'. Mostly um, me. Yeah, no, we've all been doing it. It's been great. But all the shirts are good. The bits have been fucking stupid. Uh, the shirts are fucking great. Like, I know, honestly, though, like they're fucking great shirts. And, like, pant- we have sweatpants even, too. Like, fuck it, man. But Yeah, I paid my ex-wife $50, and you guys haven't paid me back yet for the I shirt did. I actually designed. did already pay you? On what? Well, before this came out. <laughs> If we still have not <laughs> there's a problem. Anyway, uh, check us out on Facebook. We've been doing a lot of fun stuff on Facebook. We're doing, if hopefully the quarantine's over, everyone. But if, it's spoiler, not. we're it's recording not. this during this. Uh, so, yeah, hey, check us out. We're doing watch parties. Uh, we're doing fun stuff like that on Instagram. You can find us, too. It, we're having a good time uh, making... We're trying. Yeah, it, this reality of everything. So please uh, follow along and, and interact with us. We love fucking talking to everyone. We are we like everyone. We're cool. Bye. Peace. <laughs> what is that? Is that Q the Winged Serpent? <laughs> no, that, that might be the slab of beef from the Chinese restaurant in Dead Heat. No, get out!